personal finance practice problem using Excel. Tax equivalent yield tax rate comparison. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice, and blank. Example, in essence, being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. Information on the left-hand side, calculations on the right. We're calculating the tax equivalent yield because taxes always complicate things. And for example, if we're looking at something like bonds and we have a bond that doesn't have taxes on it, possibly a municipal bond and we want to be comparing it comparing it like to like with other bonds that do have different tax consequences related to them that's what this calculation is going to help us out with we've seen it in a prior presentation now however we want to think about what would happen if we change our marginal tax rate and then we're going to be doing our comparison thusly to see what the impact would be as the tax rates go up or down, for example. In other words, typically, uh, the people that are in the higher income will have higher tax rates and it will typically be more beneficial than if they can get some kind of income or some kind of return, not subject to those larger returns. That's the objective. Let's look at the second tab. The practice tab has some pre-formatted cells on the right-hand side, so you could work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab, we're gonna do the Excel formatting. If you don't have this information, you can just build it. So you could select the whole, if you do not have this, I would select the whole sheet, starting by putting down your underlined formatting, right click, format the cells, and then I usually start with currency, brackets, no dollar sign, and no decimals. I'm not gonna hit okay because I already have this information. Instead, I'm gonna X out, then add the data on the left-hand side, adding the proper percentages on the cells as necessary using the percent. You can put your cursor here and put in the 30% and then subtract it by two. You see the formula here and then just copy that down. So we're going down 2% each time then make a skinny c column and you're ready to go so we're taking it all the way down to zero here's our formula down below so we'll do a quick recap of that calculation converting the formula into like a table format which is a, I think a good practice and then we'll do a nice quick side by side kind of comparison okay so let's make it let's make this cell a little bit wider we're going to recap our our table calculation first just with this first number at the 30 percent marginal tax rate remember that the marginal tax rate is your highest tax rate with united states income taxes we have your tax rates can go up so you might be taxed at multiple rates so you might have an average tax rate you might have a marginal tax rate the marginal tax rate is your highest tax rate. That's the one we use because the next investment decision you make is made at this point at the margin, and therefore it's at your highest tax rate. That's the rationale from an economic standpoint. At the margin, at the margin. So we got a taxable equivalent yield. Let's do that. I'm gonna make this black and white. We're gonna, I'm gonna reconstruct my little table here. We're gonna go home tab, font group, and black and white so i'm going to take the numerator here which is the tax-free bond yield i'll type that in tax free bond yield and i'll put that in the outer column that's going to be the seven percent it's a municipal bond not subject to tax it's at seven percent i can't see it i can't recognize it because i need to percentize it so i'm going to go to the home tab numbers and percent of fives and then i'm going to say the denominator is here one minus the tax rate i'm going to put that in a sub calculation i'm going to type out what i'm going to do first one minus the marginal tax rate colon and then i'm going to do it underneath pulling it into the inner column showing a sub calculation in a table type format number one one and then i'm going to pick the marginal tax rate so i'll just say equals this marginal tax rate it's going to be equals i'm just going to do it for the 30 percent and then i'll i'll show you how to do it in one cell we'll do the calculation one cell later and then we'll copy it down so this is going to be the 30 percent going to put my cursor back on it so we can percentize it so we can recognize it home tab numbers percent let's go to the font group and under underline it too as well and I'll just copy this. Now I'm going to copy this and put it down. That's our total. We've achieved the goal. Double click on it. Get rid of the colon. 
there it is let's do some indentation to make it look nice because we like to make stuff looking might as well make it look nice if we can it's not that i'm overly picky about that kind of stuff but you know this is for you this is for you guys i want you to have a good experience make it look nice for it so this is going to be one minus the 30 let's put up make that a percent home tab number group and percentifies that 30 percent and then this is going to be the tax equivalent yield is going to be now we've got the numerator and the denominators in the outer column so i'm going to divide that's what you do when you've got numerators and denominators so seven divided by 70 boom but it's zero but that's because we need to percentify it home tab percentification little percentification let's put some decimals we don't need them right now but we might need them later for the next times when we run this out so we'll add some decimals just to make sure that it's uh 10 percent so let's put an underline here font group and underline it let's put an underline let's make these a little bit smaller smaller them down shrink them skinnerize them make them thinner put them on a diet whatever you want to call it you can say it many whatever you want to call it home tab font group let's make this blue and bordered because that's what we typically do with our data input stuff here if you don't have that blue right there you can go to the more colors standard that's the blue right there that's the one i'm picking okay and then home tab font group and borders so that now let's try to do it in one cell and in such a way that I can copy down and say, well, what would happen if I was at a 28 marginal tax bracket? My highest bracket was 26. My highest tax bracket was 24 and so on. This of course would be indicating the fact that we have less income generally, or at least taxable income, therefore subject to lower top rates, top marginal tax rates. Okay, so to do that, let's make a skinny column on the skinny G. I'm gonna take the skinny C. I'm gonna take the magic paintbrush home tab paintbrush and just paintbrush it one one brush i could it's like paint it's like i painted the whole fence with one stroke one long stroke and the whole fence is painted it's a magic paintbrush so this is gonna i'm gonna call this the marginal tax rate and this is gonna be the tax the tax equivalent yield i always put the e before the i i before e you know the rule i know the rule but my fingers my fingers don't like it my fingers don't like the rule my fingers like typing the e before the i it's not that my mind is wrong on it it's my fingers i'm going to center this okay so then i'm just going to say this will be equal to i'm just going to pick up the 30 percent right there Let's make that a percentification, home tab, numbers, percentify it. And let's see if I could just do this calculation, this whole thing we did here in one formula. One formula, it's not too difficult. It shouldn't be too difficult, right? So we're gonna say this is gonna be equal to like the starting one, which was, I can pick it up here. Let's pick it up here though, that one. And then I'm gonna say uh, divided by, that's the numerator, divided by brackets, the denominator, which I'm just gonna say one, minus the 30 percent which i'm going to pick up right here this time which is that 30 that 30 i'm going to pick it up right here this time and then close it up and boom except i need to percentify at home tab number percentify i'll add a couple decimals because when i copy it down it's going to be it's going to be different now i'm going to copy this down this 30 percent i'm going to bring it all the way down until it gets to zero that's my top tax rate you'll recall i'm going to call i'm going to copy that down and say what if my top tax rate goes down like and i'm comparing it then if it was at 28 i'll recalculate the formula one time and then i'll just copy it down and i'll show you we'll have to do some absolute reference to copy it down but if i did it again you know it'd be equal to the uh the numerator which is going to be the municipal bond rate which is not subject to taxes divided by the denominator which is one and then mine is the top tax rate, which I'm now saying my top tax rate is 28%. Obviously these are not subject to the current tax tables, right? I just picked going down by two, right? The progressive tax tables are gonna have, you're gonna have to look at the progressive tax tables to see what your highest bracket is and so on. But in any case, we're gonna say, okay, let's make that a percent home tab number group percentify, add some decimals. 
So now it's at the 9.72 about. Notice it's rounded now, but Excel rounds it to 9.72, although the, the real number is in there unrounded if you were to use it in a formula. So that does that make sense to us? So we're saying the bond is giving me a return of 7%. And if it's not subject to taxes, and I was to then have compare it to another kind of uh, bond that is subject to taxes, say corporate bond, for example, then if I was at a 30% top marginal tax rate, not average, but my top tax rate, because I'm doing this on the margin, then I would need a 7 per, a 10% return elsewhere. So I have a bigger difference between the returns, right? If I took the difference between the returns, I'd say, well, that was 10% minus the 7%. Let's make that a percent. Let's add a, some decimals some decimals and i'll call that the difference difference because that's what it is that's what it is why you call it what do you mean why am i calling it that what do you mean that's what it is it's people trying to three three percent okay so and then if i did if i copied that down here then of course uh uh hold on hold on i've got to <laughs> I've got to make that that one absolute so on because that's outside my table so i'm going to say this one's on b2 f4 dollar sign before the b dollar sign before the two enter put my cursor back on it now auto fill it back down so there now it goes down because that makes sense right because if my mark if my top tax rate is 28 percent lower than 30 percent then then you would think i can get an equivalent yield i'm not getting as big a tax benefit from having the municipal bond because I'm not paying as much taxes on it. Therefore, the higher your income is, the more likely, the more you're incentivized, the more, the more you're naturally encouraged to want to get a tax benefit on it. Obviously, if you don't pay any taxes down here, then you, you're not going to have, uh, it's not going to matter too much whether you get a tax benefit on it or not, and so on. So let's, I'm going to delete these two down here and let's see if I can just double click on this first one and format it so I can copy it down. So this, so this is on B2, that's outside of my table. So I want to make that absolute because I don't want it to move down when I copy down. So I'm going to put F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the B and the two. You only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. This one I do want to move down as I copy down. So I'm going to say, okay. And this one I already fixed. So I'm going to select those two, just double click on the fill handle button, boom, double click. And you can see then if, if I'm keeping this constant, I'm talking about the same uh, municipal bond that's not subject to taxes and comparing it then when, my, when I have lowering tax rates, right? So now I, as my top tax rate goes down, I need, I, I can get another bond which will be the equivalent, right? A tax equivalent yield from like a corporate bond and I can get a lesser return, right? If I have a 30%, I need a, I need a corporate bond that gets a bigger return. And obviously this is only one factor in your decision-making process because you also want to think about the risk involved with like a municipal bond versus a corporate bond and so on. What's the rating and so on. But you could see obviously it would be a lot lower as my tax rates were lower. And if I had zero taxes, meaning I have income below the point or taxable income below the point that I even pay any taxes, then of course they should be the same. It should be seven and seven. Doesn't matter if it's gonna be tax related or not because I'm not getting a tax benefit from it and therefore it might not be the best investment. So you can see the incentives for us for municipal bonds, the ones that might give us a tax benefit if we have low, if we have low tax rates is less incentivized for us to, to do that. We probably can get other bonds of a, of a similar risk level and possibly get a higher return. But as our income goes up, you would think that if you have a high marginal rate, then you're much more incentivized to say, well, yeah, that tax savings is now quite relevant to me at that point in time is the general idea. So I'm going to make this uh, blue and bordered. Let's select these items and say, let's go to the home tab font group and borderize it and hit the drop down on the bucket and blueitize it. Now let's add a chart just for the fun of it. So I'm going to select these two columns here just to add, just to add a chart. And I'm going to go to the insert. We're going to go to the charts. I usually use this one because I can then assign my X and Y axis. I'm going to use these, these scatter with smooth lines and markers. Enter that item. I'm going to grab it here and pull it to the right 
And so there we have it. Looks pretty good right there. I like to check the data. So I select the data. There's my series. If I edit it, I can then say, okay, there's the X numbers. That's going to be my, my tax rates on the X. And then on the Y, on the vertical, I've got my yield. That looks good. So I'm going to say, okay, and okay. But then I'll typically want my axis titles here. So I'm going to say, let's add an axis title. So I'm going to say axis titles. And then usually you can kind of click on the edge of this and then say equals. And you can see the equal signs up here. And then I'm going to pick up the tax equivalent. You can't get the yield because it's in the second column. If you do it this way, you could type it in. And so there it is. And then down here, I'm going to put my cursor on it and then say equals. And this one is in essence the tax rate. I can't pick up the marginal because it's in two cells. So I could type it. Enter. I'm going to get rid of the title up top. I'm going to remove the title. And then I'd like to move it up from zero, starting it at like 6% maybe, so I can get a little bit more detail. So I'm going to double click on this axis. I want to be in the vertical, these vertical columns. And the minimum here is currently at zero. I want to bring it up to 6%, which in decimal point format is 0.06. If I click off of it, then, or tab off of it, then it recalculates there. So that gives it a little bit more detail, starting at six. And then I would like to maybe bring it out not to 35, but bring it out to 30. So I'm going to double click on this one and then go to the three to the bars, open up the axis options. And I want the maximum this time to go not to 35, but just cap it at 30. And so there's our there's our chart. I'm going to close this out. So now you can see just for a visual purposes, just to practice our charts, right? We can see as the tax rates go up from zero it's going up to 30 percent we could see what is happening in terms of the relationship to the tax equivalent yield you could also you know adjust the spaces here if you wanted to see every every uh two you know uh from from zero to two right it's going this way zero to two and so on but you know how much detail you want in the chart so you can play around with the charts uh there